Welcome students. Today we will solve fourth numerical on movement of inertia. So let us start the lecture. Over here we are given one composite area and we are asked to find its movement of inertia about a centroidal axis as x axis marked over here. So we need to find movement of inertia about this axis and it is a centroidal axis because it is passing through the centroid of this composite area. Okay, so what is the first step? First step is that we should divide this composite area into regular areas. Okay, now let us see uh, how we can get this composite area. The best option for us is that uh, we should consider this as a rectangular area and from that rectangular area we should subtract the semicircle on the both sides. So we will get this composite area. It means we have to divide uh, this composite area into three regular areas. First is this complete rectangular area and then we will consider this semicircular area then the semicircular area on the right side. So we have to consider three regular areas in order to get this composite area. So we will say that consider a complete rectangle of 120 by 150 and from that rectangle subtract two semicircles on both sides to get the composite area. Okay. Now after this what we have to do? We will say that uh, movement of inertia of this composite area about main axis, centroidal axis xx will be equal to, that is ix, will be equal to ix1 minus ix2 minus ix3, where ix1 is the movement of inertia of the rectangular area about the main axis and ix2 is the movement of inertia of second semicircular area about the main axis and ix3 is the area movement of inertia of the third regular area that is a semicircular area about the main axis. So it means uh, what we have to do we have to first find ix1 that is movement of inertia of the rectangular area about the main axis xx. So what is the first step in that case? We know first of all we have to find area of first regular area that is rectangular area and we know area of a rectangular area is given by length into width so how much is the length over here 120 how much is the width mentioned it is 150 so we will put these values and we will get its area as 18,000 nm square now what is the next step next step is we should locate its centroid so where the centroid of rectangular area lies it lies at L by 2 and B by 2 you see L by L is over here 120 millimeters so L by 2 so this distance will be 60 then B over here is 150 it means from bottom we have to measure 75 so this is 60 and this is 75 so we have located its centroid and we have marked it as G1 now what is the next step next step is that from that centroid we should draw axis called as a centroidal axis of area 1 and uh, that axis must be parallel to the main axis. Now we know that main axis is a horizontal axis. So from that centroid that is G1 we will draw its a centroidal axis parallel to the main axis. You can see over here we have shown a light blue line. The next step is find the distance between the main axis and the centroidal axis of area 1. And you can clearly see that both are at same place. That means distance between these two axes is 0. So it means h1 over here is 0. Now what is the next step? Next step is we have to find area movement of inertia of area 1 about its own centroidal axis. And we know area 1 is a rectangular area. So for a rectangular area, area movement of inertia about its centroidal axis is given by the formula BD cube by 12 where B is that side of the rectangle which is parallel to the centroidal axis. Now over here to this centroidal axis we have this side parallel. It means 120 will be B and 150 will be D. 
So formula will become 120.150 cube by 12. So from here we will get IG1. Now we know once we get these three values, we can apply parallel axis theorem to find area movement of inertia of area 1 about the main axis. So that will be called as IX1. So that is equal to IG1 plus A1 H1 square. So we will put these values and we will get answer. And you will find that as H1 is 0, so area movement of inertia of area 1 about the main axis will be equal to its centroidal axis. Okay. Now what is the next step? Next step is find the area movement of inertia of area 2 about the main axis that is Ix2. So for that what we have to do? We have to first find its area. So it is a semicircular area. So it will be given by pi r square by 2. So let us see what value we have for its radius. Over here its diameter is mentioned as 100 millimeters. So it means its radius is 50. So that is why we have written pi 50 square by 2. So from here we will get its value A2 as 39.25 millimeter square. Now after this what we do? We locate the centroid of area 2. Now it is a semicircular area and where the centroid of semicircular area lies? It lies on axis of symmetry. So where is the axis of symmetry of semicircle? This is the axis of symmetry of the semicircular area. Fine. It means on this axis somewhere centroid will lie for semicircular area 2. Where that centroid lies? We know that also. That lies at 4r by 3 pi from its base. So we have marked its centroid as G2 and this distance is 4r by 3 pi. This we have learned in the previous lecture where we have learned the movement of inertia of various regular areas. Okay, what is the next step then? Now next step is that from that centroid we should draw its centroidal axis and that should be parallel to the main axis. So you see over here from this centroid we have drawn a light blue line which is representing centroidal axis of semicircular area which is kept parallel to the main axis. Now next is we have to find distance between these two axes and you can clearly see that both axes are at the same place. So what we get from here H2 is equal to 0. Now after that what we do? We find area moment of inertia of area 2 about its own centroidal axis. Now what is the formula for that? The formula for that is pi r square by 8. So this you should remember that if we have a semicircular area and we need to find area moment of inertia about the centroidal axis which is a vertical axis to its base for that axis we have this formula pi r square by 8. So put the value of r as 50 you will get ig2. Okay what next? So next is that we have to find area moment of inertia of area 2 about the main axis through parallel axis theorem. So that is labeled as Ix2. So Ix2 is equal to Ig2 plus A2 H2 square. Now we know H2 is 0. It means area moment of inertia of area 2 about the main axis is equal to area moment of inertia of area 2 about its own centroidal axis because, because both axes are lying at the same place. That is why we are getting these two values same. Now over here one interesting observation we have to make. What is that observation? You can see area 3 that is a semicircular area is exactly similar to area 2. It means if we have to find Ix3 that is area moment of inertia of area 3 about the main axis it will be equal to Ix2 only. Fine. So we will write similarly for area 2 we can calculate Ix3 that will be exactly same because both areas have same size and shape and they are opposite to each other. Okay, so we got these three values. Next step is very simple. We just have to enter these three values to get our answer and that is Ix. So I hope the procedure for solving this numerical is clear to you. Thank you very much.